Hi folks, in this video, we're going to be looking at painting weathered beaten red industrial bases, just like the one this ultramarine from the Horus Heresy is standing on, defending the catacombs of Kalth against the word bearers in their great betrayal. So without any further ado, let's cue the music. To start out with, I'm going to be stippling some black leather from a scale 75 all over the base. If you don't have black leather, you can use any dark brown that you'd like. I happen to like the scale 75 black leather as it has some nice purple tones in on the brown. And with the stippling, it's very similar to dry brushing, but instead of moving backwards and forwards, we're doing a stabbing motion into the base. And what this is going to do is leave a little bit of a textured finish, but put some colour down onto the flatter areas, leaving our black primer in the shadows. Once we are happy with our dark brown base, we're then going to come in with some deep red from a scale 75, and once again applying in a stippling motion, starting to build this up into a red colour. If you don't have deep red from a scale 75, corn red from Games Workshop is a suitable alternative for this colour. And just like in the previous step, we're going to be stippling and pressuring the colour into the base. And this gives us a nice soft build up of the colour, allowing to get a nice transition from our dark brown into our dark red. As this is quite a dark red, we won't be looking to build up a huge vibrant red transition immediately. And this is the nice thing about this dry brushing and stippling motion, is we will get that lovely soft transition and build up of colour. As you can see, I'm doing a second pass over some of these areas and it's starting to build up a much more red colour. And as you can see, going in with just neat without getting any rid of the paint gives us a much more vibrant finish. If you do this in different places over the base, you get a lovely textured, worn feel that is very difficult to do just by painting and layering. And this is much, much, much faster. Once our first dark red is dry, I'm then coming in with Antares Red from Scale 75. This is a very similar colour to Mephiston Red from Games Workshop. And I'll be using this in a more refined approach, picking out a few bits of areas that I want to be a much more vibrant red and stippling and dry brushing this colour into the base. And you can build this up in multiple passes to get the desired vibrant finish that you want. And as you can see, we're starting to build up a really nice transition from that dark brown to a deep red it's getting on the edge of a nice, saturated, vibrant feel, giving this a really nice look. After a couple of passes of the Antares Red, it should look something like this. And we built up a nice transition between the dark brown and a medium red. For the last step, I'm coming in with a circular dry brush of older brown red from Scale Color. Now this is a very similar color to Evil Sun Scarlet from Games Workshop. And what I'm doing with this is picking out a few select areas to really increase the vibrancy and saturation of the red of this base. Now these industrial bases from Games Workshop are quite flat and even though there is some recessed details, there isn't actually a lot to go on. So what we've done with this transition of red is to give the illusion that there is more texture and detail than there actually is. And this nice stippling circular dry brushes motion has allowed us to produce a nice transition of colour, giving a quite pleasing effect to the eye within something that's actually very simple to do. Once all the red is done, come in with your favourite brown wash. In this case, I'm using Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop. And with a thin brush, I'm going to be painting this into all the recessed detail quite carefully with the brush. If you want, you can do a gloss varnish beforehand to aid the flow of this wash into the recesses. But usually I find that if you go a little bit over, you can just wipe it a little bit away with your finger. And there's no real trick to this. It's just a matter of taking your time and going into all of these straight lines, rivets and recess details. If you're doing long vertical widths, I would recommend turning the base so that you move your brush from top to bottom rather than trying to go from a right to left or a left to right. It is much easier and much more controllable in a top to down motion. And it's just a matter of going around all these details until you're happy with the result and leave it plenty of time to dry. 
Once the wash has dried, I am then coming in with the original black leather from scale 75 just to touch up any mistakes I have made going on to the more technical gubbins, the hoses, cables and whatnot in the recesses of them. Whilst the black leather is still on my palette, I am going to be using it to start doing some sponge chipping. What I have taken here is a piece of blister foam, dipped it into the black leather and using a pair of tweezers, I am gently dabbing the paint onto the base. and I am doing this in the corners and areas where the paint would get scuffed. I would try dabbing on a paper towel first, just to make sure that you are not putting loads of paint down on, and if that is too little then you can add a bit more. With this effect it is very easy to add too much all at once and be very difficult to take away, so it is always best to be cautious at first and then build up the colour and the chipping. It is a very nice way to get a very natural finish due to the irregular pattern of torn sponge. It is good to keep this effect subtle as it is very easy to go overboard. Next I will be coming in with some Yushabdi bone from Games Workshop and what I will be doing with this is I will be picking out the sharpest edges and I will just be doing this in an almost a scratching motion with the side of the brush. It is not a true edge highlight and I am keeping the paint thin and I am going round and picking out some of the more raised areas and the flatter lines with dots and scratches as to where the lights would hit. I am also touching the underneath areas of where I have done the scratch markings with the sponge to give the illusion that they are recessed into the actual base itself. With this scratching edge highlight motion I will also be picking out the edge of the base and what this is really allowing to do is to give a faded look on the red paint but also allowing all the detail to pop out and really give a nice level of contrast. This here is shown at three times the speed of which I actually did this and this is just to give the, the idea of where I touched up on this base and how I went about and did it and this is all using that small dotting and scratching motion with the side of the brush. After going round it is given a really nice scratched and weathered look while allowing all of that detail to pop out with minimal effort. Next I am coming in with some warm fang brown and I am going to be picking out the raised areas of all the technological gubbins, so the hoses, the cables and any electrical wiring and this is going to add a nice rust effect by adding some orangey brown tones over the black leather. For a final touch on all the pipes and mechanical sections, come in with your favourite medium bright silver, in this case I am using heavy metal from scale colour, and pick out the tops and the edges of all the mechanical gubbins, and this will give it that real impression that this was once silver and the rust and the grime has gathered in the recesses, and only on the most scuffed raised areas is it still that shiny steel underneath. As a last finishing step, I am coming in with my favourite black paint, and this is Vallejo model colour black, and I am just painting around the rim of the base to neaten it up. I do recommend a nice neutral colour for painting the rim of your base, I often go with black as it often allows the colours that you have painted on the base to really pop and stand out. And with that, this red industrial base is now complete. If you've enjoyed this video, why not consider subscribing? It's free of charge and you get notifications on further video tutorials just like this one in your newsfeed. So, until next time folks.